Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for your continuous support and positive comments for my videos. In this video, we will see the data transmission service identifier. Firstly about the read data by identifier, then write data by identifier and also the flow control handling. And most importantly, we will see it with Capel programming live examples. Firstly, we will see about read data by identifier. The service ID for the read data by identifier is 22. Definition for the read data by identifier is the client requests to read the current value of a record identified by a provided data identifier. So which is nothing but with the help of the read data by identifier we will be accessing the current value of the data identifier which is stored in the ECU memory location. So for this we need to maintain a specific frame format just nothing but read data by identifier followed by data identifier so here byte 1 corresponds to the read data by identifier byte 2 and 3 it corresponds to the data identifier itself so for example 22 is the read data by identifier service id and here 15 and 49 it corresponds to the data identifier itself which is nothing but the DID. So the DID itself is 1549. What we are going to do is we are going to read the current value of data identifier which is stored in the ECU that we are going to read it through the 22 service. So this is the purpose of the read data by identifier. So let us have a look on to the live example with the capital program. So let us look into how we could use this read data by identifier in diagnostic console as well as how it can be programmed using capital code. Uh, firstly, you have to open the Keno application and once if the Keno application is open, go to the diagnostic tab and um, you have to configure your CDD file in the diagnostic ISO TP. And once if it is configured in the diagnostic console, you will have the uh, option to open this diagnostic console window. Now once if this window is opened, then you can make use of this window to read or write the uh, identifiers. Now uh, we are going to uh, take an example of uh, a read data by identifier. So here I am going to use the 22 service and then uh, my data identifier here is 0619. So 22 is the service for the uh, read data by identifier and 0619 is the data identifier. Now I'm going to execute. Okay, I got a response here. So my response here is 62061902. So here 62 it represents the positive response for my read request. So positive request, uh, positive response is something like you need to add 40 to your request. So 22 means you have to add it as 40, and so in, in your positive response you will get as 62, and then the next byte two and three it responds the data identifier itself. So 0619 is the data identifier and the response data, data is nothing but 02 here. So this is what, this is how uh, the format of your response code would be, would look like. And in the trace window, you could see the same here. Uh, when I requested, when I send this 22 service with uh, 0619, you see the entire uh, data length is going to be 0, 3, it's 3, means uh, 22 uh, byte 1 is for the 22 and then uh, byte 2 and 3 is for the uh, data identifier. So in total 3 uh, and the response for the same, it's going to be 4. It means that along with the uh, positive response which is 62 and I have the data identifier 0, 6, 1, 9, along with that I'm going to get the data also. So additional 1 byte, so it's going to be 0, 4. In total 4 is the DLC for this. So this is how we could do it using the diagnostic console. So let us have a look, let us program it. So if, 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 if you wanted to do it manually, you can do it using the diagnostic console. But if you wanted to code it, uh, then you can follow this method. Uh, all you have to do is go to the uh, .can file. I already linked the uh, uh, sample can file to the network node. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a key event. Uh, based on this key event, I'm going to uh, send this read uh, request to the ECU. So it's going to be on on key. So I'm going to use a key Q. So based on my key Q 
key request i am going to send the code firstly you have to um, define this object for the message um, so here my request id you need to know about the request id so here the uh, request id for the uh, ecu it is 7c3 and i'm going to create an object for it so it is nothing but msg here uh, this is the message what i'm going to uh, send with the bytes so here it's a simplest format like you can use the msg dot uh, byte 0 byte of 0 is equal to what is my length my length I am going to have it as 0 3 uh, why 0 3 it is because I am going to send I am going to send the uh, service 22 as 1 byte for byte 1 and then followed by the data identifier which is of 2 bytes so that is why I am going to keep it as um, 3 in total now I am going to um, so this is my byte 1 byte 1 data is going to be this and uh, my byte 2 data should be now comes the data identifier 06 and then byte 3 it is going to be 19 and then you can leave the rest as 0 because we are not going to send anything because here we have defined it as 3 and so all this data it does not uh, really uh, we do not really care about this uh, data but uh, let us give let us fulfill the entire uh, byte 6 So 5 and then we have 6 and 7 so I am going to stop at 7 because we started at byte 0 and then you have to output the signal right so you need to you need to send this so for that you need to use the output function and in the output function what we are going to output this object so we already um, added the properties of uh, bytes so 8 byte data we have uh, already updated and then we have to send this object uh, to the ECU for that you have to use the output function so now my uh, uh, code is ready let us save it uh, so uh, the intention here is when we press the Q key event uh, I am going to send this uh, request so the request is going to be 220619 to the ECU uh, let us look into it so now our code is done so let us uh, compile it we'll start the measurement again to make sure that uh, the code which is changed is effective now so it's now it's executing um, so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to press the q key here so you have to see over here uh, when i press the q key uh, i will see a uh, request sent to the ecu so i pressed and uh, now there is a request sent I get a response so this is purely not from the diagnostic console but from my code uh, it's based on the on on key event so on key I'm going to send the request and uh, uh, the request sent is 220619 and then the response which I received it is 6206190602 is the data so this is how uh, you could use the read data by identifier from your code so it's the simplest way that i have mentioned over here but if you are uh, if you have a cdd file uh, which is uh, having a clear data about uh, uh, this particular did already defined then you can use the instead of using the byte wise assignment you can also access the exact uh, data itself itself in the diagnostic console which is already defined and then you can send it directly so uh, in this code uh, if you do not have any uh, the, if you do not have this data identified defined in your cdd file then in that case you have to go by this way yeah this is about the read data by identifier so in this section we will see about uh, write data by identifier so the write data by identifier service 
allows the client to write information into the server at an internal location specified by the provided data identifier. So here the client it represents a tester and the server it represents the part of the ECU and from where it will access, it will access from the internal location of the provided data identifier. So this is what they are trying to explain here. So what we will be using, we will be using a 2E service for the write data by identifier and then we will be using the specific data identifier which you wanted to write it and then followed by the payload data that you wanted to write it into the ECU memory. And of course, the frame format for this write data by identifier will be a little bit different compared to that of the read data by identifier. So the frame format is here. So write data by identifier will be followed by, which is nothing but the 2E service, followed by the data identifier itself, which will be of 2 byte data and then followed by the payload data. So this is what uh, you will not, you wouldn't have seen it in the uh, read data by identifier, but we need to specify this payload data and the data that you wanted to write into the memory. Um, so that this is an additional uh, byte that we have to follow in the frame format for write data by identifier. So write data by identifier, it consumes for the first byte. So the byte one will represent the write data by identifier service ID and followed by the data identifier, which is nothing but the byte two and three. And then payload, it varies from byte four to byte eight. So if it is a single frame uh, data that you wanted to write. Uh, so this is the frame format for the write data by identifier. And a typical example for it is uh, 2E, uh, which represents the first byte. And then uh, the byte two and three, it corresponds to the data identifier. So 0, 06 and 19, and then followed by uh, 0, 01, the byte byte 4 it represents the payload data so here i just took an example of this D this particular data identifier um, 0619 it is of uh, which has the data length of uh, 1 for that example i took it as uh, 01 so in this case byte 4 alone will be consumed for the data so let us have a look into the live example with the capital program okay in this uh, live example we will see about how to use the write data by identifier firstly with the diagnostic console um, this write data by identifier service ID it is 2E and then my data identifier it is 0619 uh, followed by we have to uh, mention the data that we wanted to write. For instance now I am going to try to write it as 01. It is a 1 byte uh, data identifier so I am giving my 1 byte of data towards it. So let me send that. Now when I send it I get a positive response. Now, when I try to read the same 220619, I see the value is written as 01. So, in my response, you could see. Now, we will try to uh, see the same using the capital code. Okay, I am clearing it off here. And, um, let us go to the code. And now, um, in, in the previous example, we have seen about uh, with the key event of Q. Uh, we had sent this uh, message bytes uh, for the read event and now we are going to do the same for the uh, key event of S where I am going to send the write request. So here it is uh, the same format of 8 byte data in my byte 0 here it is mentioned as 0, 04 this is because it is going to add the data record along with the uh, along with the service ID and date, data identifier, I am going to add the data as well. So, I am going to keep it as 04. 2E is the uh, service uh, service request for the uh, write data by identifier and then this is my DID 0619 and then this is my write data. This is my data. So, I am going to write it as 02 because already we have written as 01. So, now we will ch see about if I write it as 0 2, whether it is getting overwritten or not. So, S yes, event is to write and Q is to read. So, the code is ready. Let us have a look in the measurement. So, now we have saved the file. I am going to run the configuration. Now, as you remember, the Q event is to read the data so i'm pressing the q the value which is written already it is value of 01 we get it as a response now i'm going to do the s e s key press in order to write the 
data into the uh, uh, data identifier 0619. So I am pressing the yes key now. Now I get a uh, first I get a negative response 7F uh, saying that 78 which is uh, response pending and then followed by I got a positive response 6E with 0619. It means that uh, the request that I have sent uh, it is properly been written into the ECU. So let us check whether it is really written properly or not. Again we will press the Q. You see now the data is written because when I again send the read request it is 220619 I got a positive response but then I also get the value as 02. Uh, this is what uh, initially we, we, we read the value as 01 and then we wrote with the right request with the value of 02. Now when we read it again from the ECU we see it as a positive response with the data of 02. So this is the way that you could write it. You could uh, uh, do the right data by identifier through the capital code. Uh, it, in some cases uh, it will not work the way that uh, uh, it, it is seen here. This is because some of the uh, right request is, is protected uh, based on the sessions. For instance, certain uh, write requests are allowed in the default session, certain write requests are allowed only in the extended session. So for that, what you have to do is you need to write one more routine in order to go into the extended session. So for that, I have written a code already here. Uh, you can add one more key press event here with the uh, extended session. So here it is going to be, I mentioned it as 02 because uh, my extended session uh, byte 1 it is 10 0 3. So only I am going to send this to uh, rest I am not going to send anything. So when I uh, first you press this uh, key uh, key instance so that it goes into the extended session and then you can write your uh, um, write data by identifier uh, which is specifically protected and it is allowed only in the extended diagnostic session. So uh, th this is how you could do it. Uh, with the right data by identifier in CAPA. So let us look on uh, what is flow control handling and why the flow control handling is required. So first of all, if you are using a single frame format uh, in which if your data length, if it is uh, 7 bytes or even less than 7 bytes, so in that case you do not need, need to have a flow control handling. But when there is a frame where the data more than 7 bytes of uh, uh, data then in that case you need to have a flow control handling in place. So why it is required? This is required in order to synchronize with the server to receive the complete data. So if the synchronization is not happening so in that case you will receive the first frame but you will not receive the consecutive frame to get the complete data from the server to the client. So a simple representation about the single frame transmission is here the sender is nothing but the ECU and receiver is nothing but the tester. So here when you send a request to the sender, uh, the sender will send the single frame format in a straightforward way in a single frame itself. So you will get all the data in a one single frame format itself. So when it comes to the multi frame transmission. If you have more than 7 bytes of data, so in that case when the when, when you request a uh, data identifier with uh, data length more than 7 bytes then the sender will first send the first frame and then it will look for a feedback from the receiver whether they are ready to get the next frames or not. So without that acknowledgement you will stay only with the first frame. So what we have to do is what this flow control is nothing but soon after the receiver receives the first frame, it has to send the flow control to the sender which is nothing for the ECU. Uh, by sending the flow control frame to the sender, we are acknowledging saying that we received the first frame and we are ready to get, to get the next frames. And then we have to specify the ST min, the minimum reception between the consecutive frames and then also about the block size. So if we specify this information in the flow control frame and then if we send it to the server or the sender then the sender will send the consecutive frames to the receiver. So in that way the communication will happen here. So here ff means it is a first frame which is sent by the sender to the receiver and fc is nothing but the flow control frame 
uh, which the receiver will send to the sender to acknowledge and to uh, and to uh, give a flag saying that um, you can send the remaining frames and then CF is nothing but the consecutive frames so in order to get the remaining payload data. So we had seen about the single frame transmission and the multi frame transmission sequences. Uh, let us look into the uh, frame format of this first frame and then the frame format of uh, flow control frame and the frame format for the consecutive frames. So firstly, we will see about the frame format for the first frame. So in the first frame that we are going to receive it from the center to the receiver is will be of the 8 by 8 byte data. Out of this 8 byte data, the first 2 byte it represents for the PCI and the remaining 6 uh, bytes of data it corresponds to the payload along with the uh, positive response and DID, uh, data identifier and then with the data. So the, this 2 byte of the, uh, PCI, PCI uh, in which the first, the most significant bits of uh, 4 bits will correspond to the type of the uh, uh, type of the frame and then this uh, the LSB 4 bits corresponds to the DLC of the uh, frame. So this is the first frame format and then the flow control frame. Uh, so here we have a 3 byte uh, PCI in which uh, you will send the, uh, this is nothing but the flow status and this is the block size and this is the min. So this is what we have to send it back to the uh, sender. The receiver will send the these informations to the sender so that the uh, sender will again send back the uh, consecutive frame. So the consecutive frame format would be like uh, we have uh, will be receiving a 1 byte uh, PCI along with that the 7, uh, uh, seven bytes of uh, data. So in which the first byte will contain the uh, the number 2 along with that you have a serial number, uh, it represents the um, consecutive frames. So if you are going to get uh, 2 consecutive frames then it will start from 2, 1 and then 2, 2 and so on it will go. So let us have a look on to the live example in the capital program. Okay, In this uh, live example we will see about how to do the uh, flow control handling. Um, so flow control handling as I said earlier, uh, if, if your data length is more than 8 byte of data, I mean 6 or 7 byte of data, then of course you need to handle it with the uh, consecutive uh, frames. Uh, so let us look into firstly with the diagnostic console, how it is handling this flow control and how to handle the same through our capital code. So this also we will have a look into. Firstly, uh, I have this uh, um, data identifier 1504 which is of uh, uh, data length more than 8 byte. So let us look into when we read it through the diagnostic console. So I am sending the request, read request as uh, 221504. I, I got the response as uh, uh, with more than uh, 8 byte of data. So here you see it's uh, the DLC it is 10, it's just more than 8 and it has been handled properly by the diagnostic console itself <coughs> for this flow control uh, because this flow control will be uh, it's it's an inbuilt method that they have it inside the diagnostic console so that they know how to handle the situation uh, whenever if the data length is more than uh, more than 8 byte um, so if you see here uh, the request to just sent um, 221504 is a request read request sent and then you see here this is the first frame which is sent by the uh, ECU to the receiver or the to the client. Now, as I said earlier, the first the first byte, first byte, I mean the first four bit, it, it represents the uh, type uh, and then the 0, 8 uh, represents the uh, size of this data. So, size of the data it is 0, A which is nothing but the 10 and then followed by the data itself. So, in the data, of course, you will have the positive response to 2 followed by your uh, data identifier, followed by the data. And if you see in the first frame, you've got only three bytes of data. So the remaining uh, bytes of data has to be sent in the in the consecutive frame CF. But for that, uh, there should be a request from our side, uh, from the receiver from the receiver to the uh, sender. So here the sender is the ECU and receiver is the tester. So we have to send the flow control uh, frame uh, in order to uh, acknowledge saying that I'm ready to receive. So this CTS is nothing but the clear to send. Once if we send this frame, then the ECU will uh, synchronize and then it will send the consecutive frame. Uh, in the consecutive frame, again, it will send the first byte of data as the uh, sequence, which is 21, and then followed by the data. So earlier we got the data as 1, 2, 3 bytes of data and then followed by 1, 2, 3, 4 byte of data. Additionally, we got it over here. So 
uh, in total we have 4 plus 3 which is 7 byte of data alone along with that 3 bytes of data which comprises of the positive response and the data identifier. So this is how we received it through the diagnostic console. So now let us uh, have a look into how we could handle it through the um, Capel code. So in the Capel code again uh, I have written a code uh, to send the read request. So 221504 uh, through a key press event of W. When I press the uh, W key I will send this request and let us see how it handles. So now in my measurement I am going to press the W key. And once again stop my measurement and run my measurement. Okay, I'm pressing the key as W. If you see when I uh, when I send this read request as we did it in the past for the single frame, uh, when when I do so, it is not sending the full data here. So of course we got the positive response, but we didn't receive all the data. We received only the three three bytes of data, but uh, the entire uh, data size of this particular data identifier it is seven. So we need to get four more bytes which is missing. This is because we haven't responded or uh, requested to the sender that I am waiting for the next consecutive frame. So this is something that we need to handle it from our code because our code we do, we do not have that kind of a logic implemented but of course in the diagnostic console it has this logic implemented, flow control logic is implemented by default. So now what how to do in our capital code for this flow control. So for that what we have to do is we have to add a code for on message. Uh, so here 7C3 is my request to the ECU and 7C9 is the response from the ECU. So we have to add this piece of code. So what is this piece of code? So here I am going to send my, uh, um, I am going to send the CTS, I mean flow control frame. So this flow control frame, I am going to send it based on my uh, the response from the ECU. So first response from the ECU is this. So soon when I send this read request, I got a response from the ECU, uh, which is of DLC 10 and I, in the first byte I see it as 10 and then uh, the, the data that it's going to send the in the first frame, it is going to uh, um, mention like I'm going to send 10 bytes of data. So now this is what I have to look into and based on which I need to send the uh, flow control uh, frame to the ECU. So for that purpose, uh, we have to use an on message of 7C9. 7C9 is the response from the ECU. So in the response, I have to check my byte 0, which should be uh, as uh, if it is uh, 10, then I have to send the uh, send the message as uh, 30, which I have already mentioned. Like 30, it, uh, it represents that uh, uh, it, it's, it's the flow control. Uh, that we are going to send it from the uh, uh, receiver to the sender. So once if this is sent, then it will send the remaining consecutive frame. So let me save this and uh, I stop the measurement and start it to have the code effect. Okay, now I am pressing the key W. You see, now I see a, a flow control is requested by our code where um, if you see show you here yes so what we had done over here is we send this request firstly like 221504 followed by 000 so this is what the request that we have sent the response from the ecu is uh, 10a and then followed by uh, the first uh, I mean the service identifier uh, and then the uh, uh, data itself along with the data identifier so this is the rec uh, response that we got it now what we have done is we have uh, we have enabled this piece of code like on message. So whenever we get the message from 7C9 as a response, we will check for this byte and then we will uh, what we will do is we will uh, we will check for the byte zero whether it is uh, 10. Yes, of course it is 10 means then immediately we will send this message as uh, here we uh, have used the D word not the byte uh, byte in the sense we it has to go uh, for, for each byte we have to define this value but uh, d word I used like uh, uh, 30 and 00, 0 it means that uh, first d word it corresponds to the first 4 byte and then the uh, second d word for the second consecutive uh, 4 bytes. So if you see here 
three zero 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 zero. It corresponds to the d word three zero, and then again the d word of one. It means the zero zero. It means that all the remaining bytes are zero zeros. So we have sent this flow control frame. So once we we have sent this uh, flow control frame to the uh, ECU, then I get the next consecutive frame. So in the consecutive frame, I got it as twenty one followed by zero 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 C zero three. So this is the entire data. So I I get the complete data uh, through this kind of uh, logic. So now imagine that okay, this is like a uh, like a seven byte uh, data length. Uh, imagine if I have a bigger, even bigger uh, uh, data length. For instance, I have another DID uh, which is fifteen zero three, and if I if you see, so this it's more than. Um, It's close to twenty-five, twenty-five minus twenty-two. It's the the data length of this the DAD length, the DAD data length itself is twenty-two. So uh, for this kind of uh, data, how do we need to handle? So uh, will be your question because uh, uh, it sends a consecutive frame as twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. You see uh, how it can be handled. So of course it can be handled um, with the same piece of code. So I'm I'm going to change it as zero three here. So this is my read request, and I'm not going to change anything. You can see now when I stop the measurement and start it again. Let me press the W. You see, I get the uh, consecutive frame for the um, for the data length. So the, uh, I got the entire length here. So twenty two is the size of the data. Uh, plus, you have to add three, uh, where uh, uh, one byte corresponds to the the positive response, and then we have two bytes of data for the data identifier itself. So, twenty-two plus three, it's like uh, twenty-five in total. So that's the uh, and and the nineteen that you see here, uh, this is the hex value. If you convert that, uh, you will see the value as twenty-five, and you have to minus uh, this twenty-five with the value of three, uh, so you get the data payload. So we already received all this, uh, um, the entire uh, data through the consecutive frames. So this is how uh, we have to handle the uh, flow control through your Capel code. So with that, uh, we have come to the conclusion of this video. Hope you got the insight about uh, how to use the read data by identifier, how to do the write data by identifier, and then how to handle the flow control using the Capel code as well as through Diagnostic Console. Uh, hope you like this video. Uh, if you like this video please uh, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more future videos thank you